Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zanata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colt and in this video I'm going to be going over a few quick and easy things that you can do to prepare for the CRM for everyone rollout coming out to Zoho CRM. So before I jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. That really does help us out. And if it sparks any feedback, questions, or additional video requests, leave those in the comment section down below the like button as we do try to read through each and every one of those on a weekly basis. So without any further ado, let us jump right on into the walkthrough. So one of the first things that I want you to do to get ready for Zoho CRM for everyone is make sure that you've set up your profile permissions much more carefully than you may have done for the previous version of CRM. Now, the reason that I say that is that if I come in here and I go back to the old version, let's think about what it takes to add a workflow to the CRM in the old version. So here I have to be on the CRM, I go to settings, I go into workflow rules, and then I can create a rule, right? So we've kind of taken that workflow functionality and it's kind of hidden in the background, right? So a lot of people probably don't have very well-defined profile sets, but it may not be causing you a problem right now because the users have a tendency not to go dig around in the settings in the back end of the system. So how is that going to change in CRM for everyone? So if we take a look at the new UI, one of the things that's been brought into the foreground of the CRM is a whole bunch of customization features. So if I were to hover over leads, for example, and I go under these three dots, there's a lot of functionality here that a user will now much more easily stumble onto. And that could be everything from adding fields, adding an entirely new layout, deploying a canvas view to the entire organization, um, adding layout rules, right? Like making things required, hiding fields, workflow rules. That's a really big one. As we all know, a workflow rule that's set up improperly can do very bad things, right? Like send a client 20 emails on accident that you didn't mean to send. Um, even things like blueprints or approval processes, right? Like this is a whole bunch of functionality that now is in the foreground and is going to be a lot easier for a particular user to stumble onto. And now the reason that I'm highlighting this as the first thing that you need to do is that the default profiles can be a little bit misleading. So if I come into settings and I access our profiles here, the default profiles in CRM are going to be administrator and standard. And if you're not familiar, the 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 permission settings in Zoho kind of have two different categories. You've got profiles, which will define what someone can do. And then you have roles, which will define what somebody can see. And so we'll start with profiles here, but by default, you have this administrator and you have a standard profile. Administrator, as we would expect, has full access to every single thing in the system, including visibility into all the data. Standard is where things get a little bit trickier, right? Because if we were to open up this standard profile and we scroll down, what we'll see is that it has quite a lot of permissions, right? And a lot of these you can't disable because it is a system defined profile. So down here, if we go ahead and look at like some of these settings, right? Standard can manage automation. We're talking about workflows, right? It can create assignment rules. Um, they can create entire web forms inside of here that are inserting data into the system, right? So this profile has a whole bunch of functionality. And again, this probably doesn't matter for most people right now. You can get away with having a lot of people on standard because even though they could add a workflow, they're not going to dig into the settings to figure out how. But now, again, like I mentioned, just to be you know redundant here, it's all right in the front end of the system. So it's much more likely that a user is going to click on these three dots and go, hey, what's a workflow rule? They're going to add one. Hopefully it works well, but maybe it won't. Right. And so you do want to make sure that you control these down. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is create a new type of profile for all of your day to day users. What I recommend doing to accomplish that is just come on in here to the standard profile. We'll clone it. And what I normally call this is something like basic, right? And this will be the default profile that we'll use for a variety of users. 
keep in mind, you can have many different profile sets, right? So you could have like a sales profile and then maybe a sales manager and they might be allowed to add a workflow, but the sales team can't. I'll leave that to you to get into the nitty gritty. But the main thing that I wanted to highlight here in the video today is creating this basic profile and going through and peeling back a lot of these permissions that just aren't necessary for a day-to-day -day user of the system. And that could be everything from importing and exporting records, right, doing deletions of emails. I would say like changing ownership of records is probably not something that a day-to-day -day user is gonna need to do. Most importantly though, out of all of these is just coming down into this setup permissions area and just turning it off. Right. So now we've turned off all of these various settings. You may want to reactivate email and chat just so they can like email or integrate their email via IMAP. But all of these items down here around uh, automation, cadences, escalations, they do not need to be able to configure any of these items as a day to day user. And because they're all going to be on that home page now, we need to turn it off for them. Otherwise, they're going to stumble onto it and it's going to cause you a bit of pain and suffering. So I've just gone through here. I've turned off a handful of them. You'll want to take your time and make sure that you go through each and every one of these setting options and remove any of the ones that aren't going to be necessary. But now if we go ahead and jump over to an actual user of the system, I have this user here. They are set up currently in the standard profile. And as we can see, they could come in and actually add a workflow rule, right? And they would be automating emails, automating, you know, deal notifications, right? Whatever it may be. But if I come in and I go to that user and I assign them over to the new basic profile. Now we'll go back to that user. We'll give it a refresh and we can take a look at what it can do. And what we'll see here no three dots, right? Which is exactly what we want. If somebody has a great idea for an automation, they should submit it to a manager to be approved. You don't want to give all of your front end team the ability to come in here and do those types of setup actions. Um, it just opens you up to potential issues and errors and causing a lot of frustration for other members of the company, right? Who now their leads are getting these emails that shouldn't be going out right? Their deals are getting follow-ups that they didn't schedule. So you just want to do this as one of the first things as you're looking at moving over to CRM for everyone. Now with profiles out of the way, the second big thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that you have a good role structure configured for your system. And so what I mean by that is under our settings and into our roles and sharing for security controls, I will tell you a lot of the times when we start working with a new customer, this is exactly what the roles look like, right? Everyone is either set up as a CEO who just sees all the data in the system or they're set up as this default manager role who would basically only see their own data and any data that's specifically shared to them. Now, one of the reasons that roles are going to be even more important, and let's be clear, they've always been very important inside of CRM, is that a lot of the UI and workflow is going to center around what are called team spaces. And so a team space is essentially a subset of all of your modules organized into folders and then shared with particular users, profiles or roles. And now the reason that roles are such an important one here is that a lot of the times many different people can all be in the same profile right? Because this basic profile is really just determining like, can they delete a record? Can they set up a workflow, right? And if somebody's in sales or they're in customer service, basic is probably going to work for both of them. But where things start to get more differentiated is when we get into our team spaces, right? Because we want to be able to assign only the relevant modules to the relevant people. And by configuring our roles appropriately, what that means is when you onboard a new employee onto the system, you just need to put them in the role and they'll be assigned to all of the appropriate team spaces that are applicable for that role. Just as a quick reminder, if you haven't seen our other video where I kind of go over CRM for everyone in its entirety, what a team space will look like is essentially a little tab here down in the bottom left where I can select it and it will show me a subset of those modules. And so things that might be irrelevant for the sales team, they just don't need to see. So how do we actually go about doing this? So what we'll do is we'll go into settings 
We'll go into our roles. Always important here to try to set up the hierarchy of these roles in a way that is realistic and reasonable for your team. So maybe I would call this something like a sales manager because we might have like sales, customer service, various different types of managers. And then underneath the sales manager, I will add a sales user and I'll click save. So now over in my user list, I can move my demo user over to that. I got to tell you, we see it all the time that everybody in the system is a CEO, right? And they can just see all of the data across the entire platform. Again, you could kind of get away with that before because people are generally going to go in there and look at records that they own. But now the whole front end of the system is going to be unique for people that are in different roles. So if you haven't taken the time to set this up, this is your call to action. It's time to get these configured so that you're not chasing this once this update goes live to everybody. So now that we have demo user inside of this role, let's go ahead and take a look at our team spaces. And we have two of them. This one on the right is everything in the platform. So this is the type of thing that you might come in and maybe assign only to admins, right? So admins can come in here and essentially see everything across the course of the platform. Whereas something like our sales team space, this is essentially going to be used by a subset of users. So maybe we want to get rid of some of these. We'll come in, we'll add admin. Admin should just always have everything. And then we can assign that sales managers and sales users are going to have access to this team space. So now once I click save, we'll jump over to my demo user. So this is before the refresh. I have access to the CRM team space, but not the sales. Once I give it a quick refresh, everything will be updated. So it took just a moment there to refresh. I just gave it a couple more refreshes there when we uh, did a little Martha Stewart take it out of the oven. And now we'll see that this user no longer has access to the CRM team space that shows everything across the platform, but now only has a subset of access to those particular modules that we have assigned to the team space. Again, the profiles and roles here are something that may have been a back burner item for you in the past, right? You could get away with not really worrying too much about it, but with some of these changes, like bringing the automation features into the front end of the platform and the organization of all of your modules into various team spaces, kind of necessitates that we do take the time and come in here and customize both those profiles and roles to support the end goal of having an organized and consistently formatted CRM experience for every different type of user across the platform. So with that, I really do hope these two items will be helpful for you as you're getting ready to roll out CRM for everyone. It really shouldn't take you too much time, right? This is something that, you know, plan an afternoon, knock this out, and you'll feel really good about how prepared you are to move to this new experience. With that, I think we're ready to wrap up for today. If you found this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. If it sparks any feedback, questions, or additional video requests, leave those in the comment section down below that like button as we do try to read through each and every one of those on a weekly basis. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.